once you grasp this truth that I'm about to tell you, it'll set you free from religion, it'll set you free from parents and mobs and family and governments and police, everybody, it'll set you free. And it's simply this, you are divine. God has exploded in a crab nebulae explosion and he has come and manifested himself as billions of people. And you're one of you, and so am I. When I look at you, I see God. When you look at me, you see God. That's why God's name is I Am. I Am God. It doesn't mean that me, God, it means I Am. When you say I Am God, you have to say what is God's name? I Am. What? I Am God. Oh my God, then all the people, Christians run around. Oh, I told you they think they're God. I don't think anything on the side. No, Jesus Christ said. The scripture says you are God, and the scripture cannot be broken. So he said it. Yeah, yeah, like the last third album. Peace, 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 family. How you all doing? I hope all is well with you. My name is Keisha. I'm the owner of Ascendant Astrology, and I am your astrology coach. Today, we are going to be discussing the Leo full moon. We're actually excited about this full moon, but also, um, you know, there's some good and bad that comes with it, as usual, right? And so we'll have the Leo full moon at five degrees on January 25th. This will be the first of five full moons that will be at five degrees. And it'll be interacting with Pluto and Aquarius at zero degrees. Um, that's going to be a pretty big deal. That means we got a lot to learn and unfold and unravel. Um, especially while uh, Pluto and Aquarius is newly into Aquarius. So we'll, it's going to bring up a lot of things that we need to learn, change, and see for what it really is. Um, and then we will have a reset of this energy in July with two moons in Capricorn. So Capricorn is really showing up this year. I don't think that's by mistake to um, show us what we are wrapping up from Pluto being in Capricorn. And then we'll have, again, Capricorn will, uh, Pluto will dip back into Capricorn in November to December before it moves back into Aquarius. And then that's it. It'll be in Aquarius after that. And so um, Capricorn's really coming through and saying, hey, don't forget what I taught you, right? <laughs> don't forget what you learned about Pluto being in Capricorn. Um, how do we incorporate those things into the new things that will be coming up with Pluto and Aquarius? Uh, another thing to note is that we will have a lunar reversal. Now, I don't know if that starts in February or March. It's probably for the new year. I didn't really pay too much attention. I should have brought my phone over here so I could look, but um, we will have a lunar reversal, um, which means we will start the month off with full moons instead of new moons. So we've been on a new moon at the first of the month and then a full moon. That's now going to change to full moons at the first of the month to new moons. Um, and this can raise uh, the ongoing valid val validity and emotional reactions, right? We're talking about the moon. So these are our emotions, the past, family, home and family, parents, uh, all things fourth house related, um, which kind of aligns with Capricorn energy and also uh, this full moon um, in Leo, because Leo is really about family too, even though it's not really spoken about from that perspective, but there's a family element there because it rules children and the actual act of having children. Um, and so um, we can definitely see heightened emotions and that's going to start with this full moon for sure with Leo in general. Um, because it's connected to Pluto, it's bringing up deep rooted issues that we need to see so that we can change it. 
then this moon will sextile Saturn. Now, when the planets are having sex, that's good for us. The unfortunate part about sextiles is it's such a uh, lenient energy. I tend to think of Venus and that people-pleasing energy uh, when I think of sextiles and the way that sextiles are great. Uh, and you can do great stuff with sextiles. It's definitely a more um, um, happier energy than a square or opposition, right? For sure. Unfortunately, though, you have to do the work. So if you see something that comes up in your life that you know you need to change, the sextile will be there for you to support you in making that change. But if you're not willing to do the work, nothing is going to change, okay? You will be repeating patterns. You'll be doing stuff over. And because Saturn is in Pisces, that's a very logical reality for some people. Um, and um, it's a good thing or a bad thing, just something to keep in mind that this is definitely about taking action, taking initiative, putting in the work um, as Saturn would really like us to do. Um, and this is going to help us see the healing that we've already done, um, the karma that has ended and the start to new karma and new healing as the new person that you are today, which I actually really, really, really can relate to. <laughs> I have been going down memory lane. I got people coming out from the past, some good, some are bad. And I'm just taking it as, again, not good or bad, but you know, you're right. I could really work on that and do a little bit better. I, I apologize that things went down the way that it did and um, all this other stuff, right? And so I think I talked about this in the Venus and Sag video. Maybe it's been all, all the videos that I've done lately. I feel like I've been doing a lot of reminiscing because it's very real in my life right now. Um, but um, the Venus and Sag video, I was talking about the importance of connecting with others for the purpose of connecting no expectations you know try not to get bogged down in the um oh this person is coming back hopefully they're coming back to apologize or you know those kinds of things go in there with an open mind and open heart to allow for closure or the continuation of something to continue. You never really know where this is going to take you or lead you. The idea is to be open to it. Have your boundaries. Uh, know what you're not going to accept and what you will accept. Um, and don't be afraid to say, say that. You don't have to be rude or disrespectful in any kind of way, but you need to lay down the law. Now, this does not equate to everybody. Not everybody deserves second chances. Uh, people who, who have done you wrong or harm, obviously, you know, um, I wouldn't really allow those people back into your life. Um, but if they do reach out and you get wind of it uh, to do some kind of spiritual practice where you're showing gratitude, send them loving, healing vibes. And, you know, these are other ways you can use to heal, do some writing, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, and so it's really just going to depend for everybody. This is going to be different. Sometimes it might not even be a person with Pisces. It can be dreams, signs, symbols, um, uh, deja vu. Uh, I mean, all kinds of different spiritual kinds of ways or ethereal kinds of ways with Pisces that things, memories, um, can be coming back into your psyche that are some kind of message for you to change or and acknowledge that you have changed and make sure you're celebrating self-care, patting yourself on the back, congratulating yourself, depending on the situation, um, you know, on what, what, you know, what needs to be done. Um, this could also be past life people. Um, spirits coming back um to give messages 
um, to others or just to you. Um, again, if, if really gonna, it's really going to depend. It's going to be different for everybody. But uh, definitely some nostalgia going on here with Pisces of the past, the good old days and the good times and how far you've come and how far you've grown. And um, wow. Uh, I mean, I could talk about this all day. The last few weeks of my life has just been really enlightening um, and very much appreciated. Um, my heart is overwhelmed with joy. <laughs> Um, we'll also see the moon square Jupiter and Taurus. So this is about having faith in your process, wherever you're at, trusting that you are exactly where you need to be. Um, this is uh, judgment. Um, Sagittarius is, can be very judgmental. Um, and that can be expanded in some way, shape, or form. And then because it's in Taurus, this can also be things around money, finances, uh, work, um, um, your spending habits, um, your saving habits. Um, and it could also be relative to family too. In Vedic astrology, Taurus actually rules the same way that cancer does so the fourth house so that's home family matters um taurus is a little bit more on the restricted end so this could be small groups of people small events intimate events with small groups of people like-minded people people on the same page people who have a lavish taste for the good life if you will <laughs> Um, or, you know, on the lower expression, uh, Taurus can be about recycling and uh, doing art with recycled items and um, having some kind of grandiose ideas around recycling and creativity. Um, yeah, fashion for sure, because it's ruled by Venus. Um, beauty. Uh, the beauty industry. Um, yeah. And so if you're in those fields, uh, you have things like that going on. This can actually be really, really good. But because it's Jupiter and Jupiter expands everything that it touches, you, you're either going to have an overload of clients and not really know what the heck to do about it, which is a good problem to have. Or um, you're overspending and underpromising, which can cause arguments, obviously, right? So make sure your Saturn is in check. Um, you're, you're checking your money, being honest and practical about what you can and cannot afford. Don't live above your means. Um, you know, keeping those kinds of things in check because it could lead you to some to losing more. And then having to, you know, get back up and it not being that easy to do. Um, this can bring more value, um, more things to understand about how you want to live your life um, and what matters to you, um, more of what you are um, or more, more of who you are. Um, and where do you put it? What do you do with it? What do you want to go? How are you going to play it out? You know, um, Tauruses can be very strategic that way where they grow. They understand the ability to grow something brick by brick, much like all earth signs, specifically, uh, Capricorn speaks in this way, but really all earth signs have this innate ability not to rush things through, right? And so that's the one good thing about Taurus being uh, in Jupiter, whereas Jupiter can make things go wild, go crazy, but Taurus is still going to have some practical ways of doing things. So you want to make sure you're tapped into that, you're paying attention of that, to that and being mindful of that. Um, 
Um, this could also bring more gifts, luck, um, and inspiration. Um, there's room for all of it, all the good stuff, but it's going to be very overwhelming. This can bring um, rise in prices, um, part-time work and no full-time work being available. This can bring changes to law and legislation um, uh, that's hurting people and not allowing people to grow. Uh, rest assured that, you know, um, the people in power, if you will, are very aware that Pluto is moving into Aquarius and, and, and people are going to have this upsurge of um, inspiration to do better and be better. They're going to try to change things up for sure. It might not happen right away. Although I do think some of these things have happened, but if, for whatever reason, it's not public knowledge unless you're looking for it or already in those places and spaces where those specific laws have changed to know. Um, and so it's, again, it's always going to be different for everybody, but um, I do think that we're going to see a lot of laws and legislations changing around money. Um, and then, you know, the people in power will offer a solution to a problem they caused so that you can go with your hands up saying, help me, feed me. I need your help. Um, Cause you know, they, they like this kind of thing. Yeah. They are very much about um, power and manipulation for sure. And so we can see a lot of those things kind of like what they did for COVID, you know, um, they caused COVID and then they said, here, we'll give you stimulus packages that can put you in jail if you haven't paid your money back. Although, you know, now that we're here in 2024, I'm interested in knowing what actual people have experienced that because you, you do have to be um, mindful with conspiracy theories and all that fun stuff there. But uh, either way, <laughs> um, we can see some things around that. Um, it will also, the moon will also be opposite Pluto. This can bring crisis, challenges, things that are deadly, right? Pluto rules Scorpio, Scorpio rules death. And so um, it can be death around Aquarius themes, like groups, friends, AI, internet. Um, we can see a rebellion to authority um, from like soldiers, leaders, um, and things like that. This is definitely gonna bring the wars, the bells of wars ringing um, that's already going on in other countries, obviously. Um, and so we can see a lot of people just rebelling against whatever authority figures are saying, or people in power and the higher ups, whatever's being changed. Um, uh, is it Australia? I think it's Australia. They're going after the farmers. It's a pretty big deal, which I think is bonkers. Um, and they're protesting. And so we could see more stuff like that. Um, this could be crime gangs, uh, again, soldiers, leaders saying no to go to war for what, for who, you know, what's the real purpose behind it? That'd be very interesting to see. I haven't seen or heard anything about that yet. So if you know something, leave it in the comments because I want to know. <laughs> but, um, we might see some stuff like that, which I would clap for that. <laughs> um, this could be job cuts. I feel like I already said that. Um, fame, people wanting fame at all costs. We, you know, That's a real societal thing. So definitely entertainers, you know, kind of um, arguing their right to be entertainers, um, you know, um, and 
the ask to for people to stop judging them because they're entertainers. And, you know, to some extent, that much is true. It's the message, I think, that people are really arguing, at least intelligent people. You know, I don't really um, subscribe to the media um, gang banging that's going on out there. I, I can't. It hurts my head. <laughs> but, you know, there are all these kinds of stories going back and forth about these types of things. And I think we could see a lot more of that for sure with the Leo full moon. Um, yeah. Um, this is a good time to learn yourself better, get to know your soul. Pluto's the soul, Leo's the heart. Um, so really getting to know your truest, deepest, darkest desires. What is it that you really truly want? What do you be what do you want to be connected to and why? Um the sun wants to be out, right? The sun is ruled by Leo. Even though the sun is in Aquarius, it's not happy in Aquarius, it's in its fall in Aquarius because it's in the opposite sign. And so unfortunately, the sun's not going to be doing that great. Um, but because it's in Aquarius and Pluto is moving into Aquarius, it's going to give the lower expressions of Leo energy, uh, and Aquarius energy power, unfortunately. Um, but again, I feel like it's still necessary regardless, um, so that we can see what we really need to change around Aquarius themes, right? Um, so hold, hold your hats, family. <laughs> If you haven't experienced any drama yet, don't you worry. <laughs> it's a coming for sure. Um, but uh, the sun wants to be out. Um, Pluto wants to stay in. And so I get, I talked about this in the Venus and Sag video. Get out, family, for the sake of getting out. Without any purpose behind it, just get to know people, start conversations, say hi, have small talk, network, share your story. You never know who you're going to meet, especially now that we're talking about the sun being in Leo. You could be interacting with somebody who's famous or on the rise to being famous and who knows what kind of opportunities can come from that. It doesn't have to be somebody of fame. It could just be somebody who's very well known, somebody who has resources, somebody who can give you information, teach you something. Um, and you don't want to miss out on those opportunities, but you do want to honor thyself. And so having a healthy balance between going out, having, having fun, partying, because um, Leo definitely rules partying too. And, um, and not feeling bad about that, you know? Uh, everybody does self-care differently and maybe going out and partying is your thing. This could even be like going out to a restaurant, entertainment, a comedy club, um, uh, a game, because Aquarius rules stadiums, events, um, this could be, um, um, a concert. That's what I was looking for. Um, you know, stuff like that, whatever it is for you that, um, you know, makes you happy to celebrate how far you've come. If that's what it is, making sure that you do that without guilt, so long as you're not doing it and you don't got no money, because <laughs> Saturn's going to get you, you know? Um, but, you know, whatever it is, this could be spending time with your children, spending time with family, um, things that don't cost much money. But, you know, whatever it is, making sure you get out uh, and not staying inside all the time um, is going to be very important for the opposition in Pluto. Um, and then last but not least, Uranus goes direct on the 26th, which is the day after the full moon in Leo. This is important because at this point, all planets are direct. I don't think there are any other, I should have brought my phone over here so that I can check, but I'm almost positive. This ends all 
retrograde planets. All planets are direct now. And it'll be that way until May, the beginning of May. Uh, that's a really good long period of time of forward movement. Um, and so this is going to be, I think, way better than most people might think. But, you know, there's going to be some drama that comes with it for sure. Um, it's also important because Uranus rules Aquarius. And with Aquarius moving into Pluto on the 20th, this is going to give more validity to the Aquarius energy. Now, obviously, it's going to take some time for Uranus to pick up speed, so we won't see that probably until May. I mean, it'll probably be a lot sooner than that, but um, definitely not right away. Um, and so um, another reason why this is important is because Uranus was discovered, I don't think it was the last time Pluto was in Aquarius, maybe it was the last two times Pluto was an Aquarius. And so this can indicate that we're discovering our new selves for the first time. Uh, there can be new discovery, uh, uh, discoveries of new planets, um, new life forms, um, definitely some changes to astrology in some way, shape or form. This can be, um, um, like uh, people debating whether or not Uranus actually rules Aquarius and Pluto, does Pluto actually rule Scorpio? I think we can see a lot of debates around astrology and what belongs to what, and even some very real um, things that get published that are now known as this planet rules this sign. Um, we'll see. Uh, it, it, this is going to be very interesting. Um, I think it, I think it's a necessary family. I have no opinions about this stuff either way. I've never looked at, um, Aquarius much like just the ruler of, um, uh, Uranus as the ruler of Aquarius. I always look at outer planets as the bigger picture, I think that's just a better way to talk about it because they are further away from the earth. And so we're not feeling that stuff as much. And so in that way, it's considered an overall expression of the astrology, the mundane astrology, world astrology, right? As opposed to personal astrology. I always think that Saturn has been the ruler and they might argue that it's Saturn. Who knows? But I definitely think we can see a lot of things like that being talked about. I was actually watching the um, astrology podcast, which is um, done by an Aquarius, which is very interesting. Um, this dude's videos are like fucking three hours and some change long. Like, God bless the people who have three hours to sit down and watch a video like that. But um, he did a video on um, Pluto through the generations. So from when the very, very first time Pluto was in Aquarius down to right now, which I was just fascinated by this. I'm like, what? Seriously? I'm watching this. Of course, I only got halfway through it. Typical Gemini shit, right? <laughs> you can't make this shit up. Anyway, um, um, I was watching it from top to the first three or four, maybe even five. I think I got about that far. And so I really liked this, the way they did it, the way they, they broke it down to what people were like and the things that they did in each one of those generational generations, right? And the very first one was before Christ. And what they talked about was what people did back then, which was, um, uh, or what they studied back in those times, same difference, um, which was the sky, uh, which are the early day scientists, builders, your schematics, roadmaps, digital algorithms, geometry, geometrics, patterns, navigation, uh, astronomy, 
and astrology. Um, I found this fascinating because I was like, oh my God, when I was thinking about it, I thought about, you know, the kind of expressions and how that energy carried down each generation to what it looks like now. And so these are the movies that you see with the people that are kind of like this, looking up at the sky, the 4,400, uh, the people in the stories in the Bible, they talk about these people who kind of use the sky as uh, roadmaps, you know, before, um, what was it before what we got now, MapQuest? Does everybody remember MapQuest? Oh, we've come so far. Although, although they say where we go from intelligent to each generation, we get dumber. FYI. But um, I guess that's a personal opinion. I don't, I don't know. Um, and uh, and now we have the GPS system. I thought about um, all the war movies and the AI movies where you see the screen and they have those those digital uh, circles, dash, 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 lines. Like these were all the things that I was trying to show you in this book. I know you guys are tired of me showing you this book. Like, bitch, I can't see that. And I don't know what it means. And that's okay. You don't have to know what it means. Just know that my mad scientist has awoken. And I'm just like so fascinated. But this is all geometry is, right? Lines, measurements, you know, these little lines and stuff. And I tell you, I was in this class learning this stuff and it's like fucking mind blown. You know, I can show you more stuff but obviously family like you just you just gotta go and get the book take the ladies class look at look at look at look at the the, the dots can you guys see that i know you guys are tired of me the circles these are all language okay um and it's just really fat it was just really fascinating to see how you know over time it has come down to look like what we know it as today um, the next um, one they talked about was before Christ was the Mesopotamia. Now, I don't know much about Mesopotamia. I know it's very closely related to Egypt, right? I think Billy Carson talks about that the most. Um, I know there are others out there who are having these kinds of conversations, but Billy Carson is the one that I know um, the most um so if you're not following him and you want to know about that stuff just like go subscribe to his channel if you're not already and you learn everything that i'm talking about here but um this was when egypt was in power you know um which is also technology without computers i talked about that in the pluto and aquarius video um, where we, I feel strongly where Pluto and Aquarius is going to take us back to. And I'll talk more about why that's important, but essentially, um, you know, generations have fallen and we have gotten dumber. Now, obviously it's more in relation to society and the way society is set up, but also taking the initiative to go out and learn this stuff for yourself is also going to be a big ask of Pluto and Aquarius, right? Pluto's about deep research, uh, secrets, and uh, knowledge that is hidden that he wants you to bring up to the surface into the light, right? And so I really do feel like a lot of us will be called back to do some things the old fashioned way in that sense, just to remember you are the AI people. That's going to be the key to Pluto and Aquarius, mark my words. And so um, it's also AI. These were the thinks, statues, pyramids, museums, ancient historical artifacts and articles right? Um, that's all Egypt is in a nutshell when we're talking about sign symbols and how this stuff has kind of um, progressed or degressed, however you want to call it, over the generations, right? Um, now, again, I didn't listen to the full video, but I'm willing to bet by the time they got to the 1700s, it was the birth of astrology, because essentially that's all this stuff 
is to me. Um, every every time I'm having a conversation now, I'm like, I see the astrology everywhere. I'm like, oh, mm. <laughs> right. And I talked about uh, Benjamin Banneker um, back in 2020, um, who was the first person to create astrology using astronomy the way we know it now, what it is known for now. Now, it's obviously grown and changed over time, right? But he was the first person who seen what we know as astrology, he was the first person to talk about it in this sense. He was the first person to use the astronomy, the sky, to make a clock. Uh, the clock in Washington, D.C., the big tower clock in Washington, D.C., he built that. Uh, he did, um, and then he made pocket watches, which we now wear here. He also used the sky to create the house. Um, for the White House. Um, um, I feel like he's done so much more than that. A lot of science -y stuff. So these are your architects, your builders, and I don't know what they call, what, what do they call the, um, the paper that you write on to do the the schematics for, for building a home. For, forgive me. I don't know what the hell, I don't know why I can't think of the name of what that is, but these are your architects, um, your, your people who build road, road maps. He also was the first person to do, um, for the farmer's almanac. So that same system that he did the almanac for, is the same system that he created on how we as astrologers track all the astrology. So if anybody has an astrology book, if you go to the back of the book, they have all these numbers. They're in like these little square boxes. It looks, you probably have no clue what that is. That is, uh, do I know the name of it? I don't think I know the name of what that thing is. <laughs> I should, should be ashamed of myself that I don't know what the name of it is. But it's like an almanac, but for astrology. So it lists every single planet that moves in every single sign, when it moves in every single sign. So it's like a, 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 a huge calendar, if you will, for uh, astrology for astrologers to track and um, how we are able to find out when, what sign moves, where, et cetera, et cetera. I'm really ashamed that I can't remember the name of what that is, but if you Google Benjamin Benneker, it's B-E-N-E-K-E-R, you'll see almanac and then you'll see something else that is similar to an almanac. That is what I'm talking about. So um, he built that um, I am absolutely obsessed with this man's life. I've read every single one of his books. Um, there aren't very many, but you know, if you're really into astrology, you definitely want to study the person who created it, like, right? And so, um, I don't know if you can still even find those books because they was even, uh, talking about shutting down his library and his school, or I think they moved the library to the, um, uh, what's that place in um, uh, Washington, D.C., that big museum? Damn, my brain is just like, it just shut off. Like, um, damn it. It's a really famous museum with all scientific facts and dinosaurs and who killed JFK. Um, the Jeffersonian, that's the name of it. Um, yeah, I think they moved all his stuff there. So, y y you know, if you can find his books, um, I definitely would read it. He's actually a Scorpio. Did you guys know that? He is a Scorpio. Um, so go figure, right? Um, it's just, I mean, his life is really fascinating to me, but I'm a nerd. So of course I would like this stuff. <laughs> but anyway, this is the kind of stuff that I was referring to in my Pluto and Aquarius video, um, talking about this silly idea of copying people.
Um, we really have to be careful, family, on how we have these kinds of conversations. They need to be handled with care. Now, obviously, over time, as much lack and um, uneducated, as uneducated as we are today, unfortunately, you know, that's just what's going to happen. But there is no such thing as copying. I'm just really sorry to inform you. Um, the only thing copying does is create drama. And like Jay-Z said, when the family fights, nobody's winning. And um, it creates division, you know? And uh, I think Cat Williams did a spectacular job. I'm sorry, it was needed to be said because again, it's gonna bring up shit that we need to address to change. As long as we know and understand this is not copying. Um, there are no such thing as copycats, family. We are all carbon copies of the past and things that come from before us as above, so below um, to continue this story, to bridge the gap um, um, that, you know, this is why we're here. This is literally why we were put here. Uh, this is why we live on and we never die. This is our legacy, our DNA. Um, you know, why you look up to certain people as a, this is your reflection. You know, uh, you ever heard a family member say, oh my God, you look just like cousin so-and-so. <laughs> you know, um, it's a fact of life, you know, um, and when this idea is taught and not handled with care, now you're lost. You don't know who you are. Um, you're afraid of who you are. Uh, you're afraid to be who you are. And it gives power for other people to tell your story, just like we see what's happening going on here, you know, and fill in the blanks for you. That's your job. Take back your power. It's essential to life and living on your legacy and who you are and the people who came before you. Um, I think we can see a lot more people from these time, these generational timelines who are into these things and studied these specific things to either be reborn, or again, you're gonna tap into their energy to continue those storylines. Um, Pluto is going to, Pluto and Aquarius is going to awaken these themes inside of you so that you can continue telling that story. Well, what happens next? You know, so really, I would really go listen to it. It's called The Astrology Podcast. Um, it's very dense <laughs> as Aquarius energy is. If you can muster to listen through the whole thing, maybe might do it in chunks, but um, if that video alone doesn't awaken you, uh, I don't know what else will. It should definitely enlighten you in some way and change your mind about something, anything. Um, it's very, very important. Now, I know I went on a tangent with all this other stuff. So if you don't care about all this stuff, just skip it, skip it. Because now we're on the Leo. We're going to talk about the Leo themes and all that now, but um, still, I think those things, I, I, I'm i sorry to say, I think those things are going to be very, very, very real themes for the next 20 years. Um, Leo is a fixed fire sign, and so we're going to have a lot of passion about changing the fixed energy within ourselves. We are also going to see a lot of people who have a lot of passion to try and stop people who don't want to be fixed anymore, rest assured. Um, Leo is ruled by the sun and it lives in the fifth house and it's at five degrees. Five degrees is also a Leo degree. So we have some extra spice of Leo here. Um, fixed signs and Leos will feel this the most. Leo is a fixed sign. So all the fixed signs will feel this the most. That's uh, Aquarius, Scorpio, Leo, and Taurus, I believe. I'm not too sure about Taurus. I'm not going to lie, but I'm pretty sure it's Taurus. 
Um, it rules creativity, being bold, courageous, your self-expression, um, love, uh, love affairs, um, your romantic life, being strong, confident, proud, flashy, flamboyant. I definitely think this conversation about um, um, gay men are going to be are gonna, they're gonna grow tremendously. Um, I think your sex life might be spiced up or by anal. I'm thinking of Pluto. Pluto is your butthole. Just keeping it real. I think a lot of men are going to expect more anal sex. Um, maybe even women too, because I know some Scorpio women, they love anal sex, bitch. That's they spice and and and, and sugar right there. Um, so anal sex, I definitely think is going to become a really big thing. I, I can hear like five people like, bitch, you ain't getting nothing in my ass. However, I will say there are some benefits to that. You should do your research. Now, I'm not trying to encourage anybody to do anything. I'm really not. That's not what I'm here to do. However, um, I want to say it, but without sounding vulgar or disrespectful to anybody, but especially older women, you get loose. Now, there are other ways to tighten up your stuff. Anal sex helps with that, right? Um, especially if you have a lot of kids, you know, you stretch out. It doesn't feel the same. I don't get that tightness feeling of the sex. I hope it's okay. We're all adults here that we have this kind of conversation. Again, I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything i'm just telling you i really think this is going to be a theme that grows quite tremendously i'm not looking forward to it myself to be quite frank but uh there you go um leo is colorful attention it rules the heart uh so we could have to balance heart and head uh sun and moon are in opposition and so this is definitely about balancing the heart and the head or making heart uh, or head over heart decisions. Um, this could be about vacations, but with Leo, a vacation is more like um, your bucket list, places that you want to, you always wanted to go, things that you've always wanted to see or visiting a place because it has something there that you, you as a child, you was just like, and it doesn't have to be just as a child, by the way, it could be at any age, but uh, because it rules, we are rules children. That's where that idea came from. But, you know, something that you've just always wanted to see, and it's in this city. So you go visit that city type of thing. Um, theater, um, fun, play, children, your ego, like-minded people, um, drama, 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 drama. Again, just because the sex tile is there doesn't mean anything. I do think it's going to be a lot of good. I just think it's going to be a lot of fucking extra, right? Because even in the tarot, um, Leo rules the five of wands. But because it's very childlike, it's pettiness. You know, people nitpicking, uh, poking, starting trouble, instigating, uh, petty. Just headiness. I can see it all now. So it can be very fun and playful in that way. But if you don't have time for it, it can be very fucking annoying. And um, you can see it as a disrespect to the fact that you're a grown ass adult and just don't have time. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, be ready. Be ready. Uh, this could also be like um, not feeling accepted by a powerful authority figure. Um, uh, this could be uh, the, about the royals, queens, kings, kings, queens, uh, leaders, uh, presidents, you know, entertainers, higher officials, sports, um, athletes, um, being in the public eye. Um, especially, I think, I think this is going to be about relationships when you're talking about people in these positions, especially with Pluto, because Pluto rules 
you know, uh, taxes, debt, and insurances. I talked about this in my, oh, was it Moon and Scorpio? Or Sun and Scorpio video, I think, where, you know, these type of people need, um, you know, something in writing that says, this is my money. <laughs> And you don't have access to this money if we get a divorce type of stuff. So I really think this is going to be about relationships. I mean, this could be um, crime money, mob money, money that they get from harboring children, uh, these 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 uh, islands with children that they talk about. Uh, and how much entertainment has to do with that, or how many people in entertainment are involved with those types of things. Um, yeah, you know, stuff like that. I I, I think, um, you know, for sure, uh, we can see come up at this time, themes like that. Um, yeah, but I definitely think it's going to have a lot to do with relationships and money for sure uh when it comes to the entertainment world uh there's no doubt about it um this can be overbearing parents that can bring drama um because leo can be a parent uh hell capricorn could be a parent i mean capricorn is not in this video at, i mean in the has anything to do with this but um um yeah, let's just leave it at Leo being the parent because I'm about to go on a tangent and we'll be on here for another hour. I don't want to do that to you guys, but Leo can be a parent, okay? Right, because it's about bearing bearing children, right? So this can be an a overbearing parent that can bring drama. Um, this can be about saying something, speaking your truth and not feeling, uh, feeling misunderstood. Um, uh, somebody falling from the throne, right? Because uh, Aquarius and, and the sun is in its fall. And so this could be about people in high places literally falling. It could be more death. I've actually had three, I think, three Aquarius friends as of to date where their moms have passed. Was it? But yeah, both mothers um, have passed away. Um, and uh, my condolences to anybody who is going through that. Um, but this can unfortunately be a death of a parent, a family member, um, or death of somebody in a high in a high position. Um, um, yeah, uh, this could be strength, bravery, power, power struggles. Oof, I'm not looking forward to that with just full moon and Leo because they are so petty. And so again, I don't know why. It's just really annoying. It's like, you know how your children are fucking know-it-alls, but they're five. Like, you don't know shit. Go sit down somewhere. Come around here trying to tell me. It's going to be like that. It doesn't necessarily have to be that that person doesn't know what they're talking about, but it's just so small and unimportant, you know? And I think about drama that could come from this in this way with, even with the power struggles with the moon being in Leo, it's going to be like somebody who wants to be powerful but they have no power. Oh, those are sometimes those are the worst experiences to have. And not because the people, but just having to deal with those kinds of situations is just like, yeah. Okay, buddy. Um, it could be stuff like that, particularly in the work field, um, which really sucks to make it all the difference because it's not like it's a family member. You could actually really cuss them out at least. <laughs> If that's something that you're interested in. You really have to bite your tongue because you don't want to lose your job. <laughs> Just annoying, annoying little things like that. Um, this is definitely going to test your strength, your patience. Ooh, 
It's going to test you for real. Um, this could also provide you with strength for what you want and need at this time. What goals do you have? What are you trying to accomplish? Um, again, knowing the right people, getting out there, engaging, having these kinds of conversations, speaking your piece um, can really be very, very, very beneficial for a lot of people right now. Um, that's going to allow you to align with this new energy that Pluto and Aquarius is bringing in. This wants you to own your talents, own who you are, who you're meant to be, learn to be playful, enjoy your life, um, know when to stop, learn to accept praise, organize your life better, don't overdo it, um, Asking yourself, what are you proud of? And honoring that. Um, stepping into the spotlight, taking risk, being bold. Don't be afraid. Um, you might take on a leadership role um, or pursue your goals, hobbies, and being playful. Uh, you might get some kind of recognition and praise. Um, or this can be about celebrating others because we are talking about Aquarius. Aquarius is your friends. Um, groups that you belong to. And again, just looking up to somebody, um, you know, Aquarius people really idolize fame and people in famous positions, <laughs> whether you know that about them or not, have you ever heard it? I'm talking astrologically, not specifically about an Aquarius person. Aquarius energy can be about the idolization of people in fame because it is opposite Leo. And so these people really look up to those people um, and have nostalgia about being famous and being in the spotlight. Uh, they're certainly talented enough to do it, right? When you talk about the innovators, um, these are people who change um, trends and um, brands and uh, you know things of that nature, right? So they belong in the spotlight. Um, and so a lot of the times, you know, they can tend to feel like, you know, I want to be famous, you know, or I am famous. Maybe you are just on a smaller scale, you know, um, you have an entourage just like Leo's do, you know, um, that could definitely be a theme that comes up in some way, shape or form where you're revered by people um, for something that you do well, something that you've mastered, something that you teach, um, information that you give, um, information that you provide, resources that you have. Um, yeah. Now, of course, you know, this can be hard because, <laughs> because Leo really is about celebrating the self, much like, you know, Aries is, is this fire energy, right? And it can be a little selfish. It doesn't really want to share the spotlight. And so again, this is where the idea of um, you're going to have drama. You're going to have drama with friends, people telling you don't be brave, don't take a risk, uh, drama in your love life, uh, drama because you're single, <laughs> uh, drama from a partner because they're judging you. Um, this could also be you wanting to spend quality time with a significant other, um, talking about your feelings in the future, um, doing more personal, uh, spending more personal time with a significant other um, to save money, right? Jupiter and Taurus. Um, you know, making things more meaningful on the lower expression. Uh, Leo energy can care less about being popular or famous. They just are, right? They just show up that way. It's not their fault. Don't blame them. Maybe they were born into fame. <laughs> they didn't ask for this life. They was born here and it just happened, <laughs> right? And so a lot of the times you'll notice some Leo people, depending on what other placements and stuff they have in their chart, will have that role that can be very exhausting and tiring and overwhelming of having to be the friend that is everybody's friend, right? Um, or that that kind of makes them seem popular, famous in that way, right? 
they don't want it. They do it because they have big hearts and they care. They care about their friends. They want to do the right thing and be there for them. But um, it's a, it's a, a he he what is it? Heavy wears the crown. Is that the saying? Um, you know, it's a lot of work. Um, and so we can see some themes coming up around that. Um, Mm. but essentially we are going to be asked in some way to celebrate others and it might be hard for some people some of the petty the petty people out there to do um mm. i'm just trying to make sure i don't repeat myself Um, uh -huh. this could also be, um, friends. I feel like I said this already. Did I? Is this in here twice? Well, who cares? Um, if I repeated myself, I just don't want to miss anything, guys. So, yeah, you're going to have drama, drama in your love life, a partner judging you, wanting to spend more time with your friends, uh, talking about the future, spending more meaningful time. This could be intense dates with Pluto and Aquarius. Well, just Pluto really in general, but um, uh, Pluto is very intense. These are people who like grill you kind of like you might feel like you're in an interrogation. It doesn't have to be that bad, but uh, that's what Pluto energy is ultimately. Uh, that's what makes it so intense because they're not going to put up with the BS. So they're going to put all their cards on the table it, on the opposite. And it can be very secretive too. you know, people not showing all their their cards are not talking in general, making it very hard for you to figure out, okay, does this person like it or am I fucking tripping? <laughs> um, so, you know, what was the purpose of, you know, this person saying that? Was it because they like, like they could leave you in your head? Uh, this could be manipulation and mind games for sure, but they just might not be that interested in you either. <laughs> so, um, you know, making sure, again, you have your boundaries, ask lots of questions. That's always going to be your best bet um, dealing with that kind of energy. But this can be very intense dates, um, an extravagant sex life. Uh, romance can amplify. Um, I mean, your love life in general can intensify. Your creativity and ha partying habits can intensify. Um, this is definitely going to highlight how we relate to others. And do we actually really want to work alone or do we want to work with others? That's going to be for sure something that we're going to struggle with. I think it's all about time management and being honest. If you're going to work with somebody and you know you just don't have the energy or the time, just say it. Pick up the phone, send a text message. Hey, I got some BS going on. I thought we were going to be able to do this. Um, probably looks like it won't be till another month or so. Uh, and maybe it's not that long. Maybe it's it's um, shorter, but at least if you give somebody, give yourself enough space to say, hey, don't expect me till this time so that you're not leaving people feeling like, um, you know, like what the fuck happened? You know, did I do something wrong? Don't make people second guess themselves, you know? Um, honesty and um you know, communication is always going to set your soul free. When you do these kinds of things, you have to know you're creating karma for yourself, you know, where it's going to come back and hit you in the ass right at a moment where you really need it. And so if you are somebody who's trying to reach goals and things like that, don't leave people lying and waiting. Now, I know that's a hard thing to do for some people because some people are really, uh, 
this energy can be extremely shy. Think Scorpio energy are, are very shy, but they're also very, 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 very patient. And so they'll wait for the right moment to do something. Um, and they might not say that, right? But this is their methodical mind and how they think and operate. So we also, too, have to be very careful on giving people that show up in these kind of darker shades <laughs> um, bad names and just it's very important to have something to do, something, uh, uh, some kind of creative project that you can lose yourself in. So you're not overthinking or over obsessing about why this person said something one time and didn't follow through um, to keep your mind focused because that stuff like that can drive people crazy. Uh, so just be mindful of that. But essentially, I think, you know, this could be a lot of shy energy. Um, and people not showing up just because they are shy, you know, um, maybe they don't know what the fuck they want. Right. <laughs> um, and so, uh, you know, uh, so one thing about tarot that I really, 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 I mean, it really gets underneath my skin, but remember, you know, uh, two stories can be true at the same time. I do think at the same time, somebody could be shy and dismissive, but also really trying to be an asshole. Uh, because they like, they think that shit's cute, you know? So, <laughs> I mean, you really just have to, again, have your boundaries, know what you are willing to accept and what you're not willing to accept um, and make decisions off of what people are giving you. If they're not giving you what you need, then go the other, go do something else. I mean, follow up, you know, you reach out, you say something. And then if they don't get back to you, then make a decision, right? So that you can release it and let it go and, and, and it doesn't stay on your mind for long periods of time. This is very unhealthy. <laughs> I, you guys know I, I it's, this shit's not funny, by the way. I should not be laughing at this because I take a lot of calls on um, this psychic hotline and I will have women call me men. Even I've had men too uh, calling me like, why is this girl playing games with me? And so, you know, I ask the signs and I'll pull some cards and whatnot, but, um, and I'll give them some, some, hopefully what I'm, I hope I'm giving them is uh, helping them move on and not to overthink it, but it's, it's kind of funny. I'm sorry. It's not, but it kind of is. Um, the way this these kinds of little things can drive people crazy. So if you know that you're somebody who has these kind of tendencies, be brave, Leo says. Um, pick up the phone, send a text message. Hey, I know I said I was going to get back to you, but you don't have to tell them your business. I don't know. Make something up just to give closure. Shut that door. <laughs> Do not leave it open. <laughs> so that you can give people peace of mind and ease so they can move on. Um, yeah, um, I'm sorry. Um, whew. Um, this could also be people trying to put your fire out, um, people trying to make you feel guilty for being successful. So this can also be changing the way we look at um, what makes you successful? Are you happy with money? Can you bring on more people to your fame and stardom? I think we're going to see a lot of that, to be honest with you. A, a lot of collaborations. Aquarius rules um, boy bands. You think NSYNC is going to come back? <laughs> If it's not in sync, still remember that idea of copying so that it can expand into something else where, again, we see like old rap heads uh, who haven't worked together or done an album together in years get on stage all together, not for the sake of the awards or anything like that, you know, something bigger, greater, um, concert perhaps, um, coming together for 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 some kind of cause or um you know something <clears throat> and i think um 
oh, I don't remember that boy's name. Oh, there's this rapper. I don't think he's like big time or anything like that, but he's been challenging rappers who are selling these kinds of, um, you know, gang banging, drugs selling ideas and stuff on changing their message. Maybe we'll see something big with that. That storyline could, could, could uh, amp up at this time. Something with large uh, groups of people. Um, or just a group. <laughs> Maybe we'll see a new group. Maybe we'll see a girl band. Has there ever been a girl? Was TMC the last girl band? Oh my God. No, we had SW, right? SWV was after the fact, right? I can't even fucking remember. Maybe we'll see a girl band though. We'll see. Um, but I do think that that theme right there is going to grow tremendously, tremendously. Um, I know J. Cole is an Aquarius and he doesn't necessarily bring his friends into his stardom. And I know other people do this too. I'm just picking on J. Cole because he's an Aquarius, but um, he always talks about, you know, bringing his friends and stuff with him to celebrate and pay for stuff. You know, that type of idea. I think we can see a, a real big growth in that. Um to come together and work together as a team. We can see a lot of teams, teams of people coming together for a greater cause. Um, but also conservative uh, themes. Um, so now um, I can talk about why Saturn was important <laughs> and I can go on my 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 binge here. Again, I, I'm sorry if this video ends up being way longer than it needs to be but i do think these conversations are important um but because saturn rules the elderly all time and saturn is also a co-ruler of aquarius these conservative themes values traditions uh traditional norms versus societal norms um and customs um all these things are going to be for sure they're going to come up Without a doubt, uh, we can hear a lot of opinions about um, that theme and whether or not we need to be innovative or not. Right. So I was mentioning earlier in the video, I definitely think we're going to be called to go back to do things the old way. Not everything and not everybody's going to want to do it. Right. Everybody has their own path. But I think overall, in the beginning of this transit, we're going to be called we're, we're going to be taken back back into time. You know. <laughs> I do think we're going to ask to go backwards a little bit. And it could be because you can't afford it. Saturn does rule poverty um, because things are being taken away from you or because these laws and like um, and legislations are changing. It might be that you can't afford to do the new ways, especially if you're somebody who doesn't care for money, doesn't like things. You're going to put yourself in the position of, um, what might be considered lack or to do things the old way because you don't have access to the new way, right? Um, these themes are going to come up. Uh, can we do both? Yes. But again, I think the old stuff is going to come back first and then because we have to learn that we're the AI, we're the computers and not give our power away to those things. But that's going to take a very long time. And we have a very long time for this transit. I don't think we'll see that. Just like Pluto was has been in Capricorn since 2008. And look at all the shit that we're learning now that we, we weren't thinking about. Well, some of us were. <laughs> Half of the stuff back in 2008 that we're thinking about now, right? And so that same way that that played out is the same way this Pluto and Aquarius transit is going to play out. In the beginning, there's going to be some big bang. But it's going to be a big bang that causes us to go back into time with Saturn being the co-ruler of Aquarius um, and doing things the old way uh, to not forget where we came from. Remember what I talked about with copying and, you know, all that stuff in the Uranus part of this video. It's going to be important to take note of those things. Whether we like it or not, we cannot forget who we are and where we come from. It's absolutely not an option. It is not an option. In order to move forward, you're going to have to know where you came from. If you do not do that, when people say, 
the robots are going to take over. Um, you know, um, we're going to be living in this digital era. Yes. And it's going to be all controlled as cool as all that stuff may sound. Trust me, it's not going to be the life you want to live when you're being tracked with everything that you do, when you take a piss, when you take a shit, who you talk to, why you talk to them, even though some of these things are already going on now, I think it's going to get more digitized. Um, and so you're going to have to really think about this. And some people may not learn until it's too late and it's already happening. Let's just be honest. Um, but think about it and do it in a way where you make the decisions and you control stuff. Um, because if you don't, then you will be controlled. That's just the bottom line. Uh, and I talked about this in other videos, family. So I'm not, I, I, like, I, I'm not going to go into it, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay. The digital dollar, all of it, it's all about control only because they know you are about to wake up. Trust and believe that. Okay. That is the only reason why this is happening because you don't know who you are. So learn who you are, go back in time, um, you know, do your research, get acquainted with your ancestors and soul tribes and whatever you got to do, but do not forget who you are. Um, yeah. This could also be generational differences and clashes, uh, respecting your heritage while still progressing. These themes are going to be huge. Um, it's going to cause a lot of drama. I don't think it's going to be fun at all, even though I'm sitting here laughing, which I shouldn't be doing, but I do think it's going to be rather interesting and quite comical. Um, and sad and unfortunate at the same time, but very, very, very necessary, just period. And so, yeah, I'll continue having more about, about this stuff in the Aquarius video. I think I've talked enough. This video is probably going to be way too freaking long, but I love you guys. I appreciate you. I hope you found this information helpful. Peace.